Hello, everyone. Please, if you can hear me, indicate in the chat. Um, welcome to Build for Informal Sector Hackathon 2020. So thank you for attending. Um, thank you for um, participating in the hackathon so far and being consistent. Well, the, today um, we'll be focusing on um, the part of the a topic that's part of the webinar series um, for the beautiful informal sector hackathon. Agile to building successful software products. Agile approach to building successful software products um, hosted by Techrity. Um, Techrity is uh, a non-profit social enterprise who helps kickstart beginners in tech careers by providing vital resources like data, laptops, and mentorship support for their journey to be a success. Uh, Techrity, we also pro um, have a mentorship program that connects people who have specific skills such as coding, product management, product product design, writing, and connecting them with um, mentees, uh, mentors, who have mentors who have these skills that will help the mentees grow their skill set. And also we have the so Build for Social Good Hackathon, which the Build for Informal Hackathon 2020. So the Build for Social Good Hackathon is uh, meant to identify specific challenges for teams to build and provide solutions for social good problems. So at the end of the hackathon, um, during, the, during the incubation phase, um, hackathon participants can also get access to um, um, a hub support. And presently, hackathon participants are going to be um, have access to mentors that, so, that will support them, uh, um, direct them, support them during the hackathon phase. So they are not left alone to build their um, tight to a mentor who will guide them during the hackathon phase. So at Equity, we are all about engineering a community of givers for technology across Africa and beyond. And this is why we um, came up with the Build for Informal Sector Hackathon, which is meant to help um, developers take his to contribute their skills for social good and sustainable development goals challenges. So yeah, we are um, going to be focusing on the topic, uh, agile approach to building successful software products, which is part of the webinar series for the Build for Informal Sector Hackathon. And uh, for today, our speaker is Gloria Ojuku. Gloria Ojuku is a product manager. Uh, she's an agile, technical, and data-driven product manager. She loves to write software products with agile and user-centric approaches. With over five years of experience, Gloria Ojuku has worked in, on, in IT, sports tech, edu tech, e-commerce, and health tech industries. And she has also managed distributed teams across the USA and Nigeria, where she has helped organizations bring both their SaaS and non-SaaS products from ideation to life. Gloria Ojuku is also a tech speaker. She's a tech writer. She's a woman, woman in tech advocate and passionate about community. Um, she finds joy in helping people get started and thrill in the technology industry. So Gloria will be taking us on agile approach to building successful software products. Um, before that, that, the registration for the hackathon is still on and um, you can still form teams and register your um, team to start building and start hacking and start hacking. So you can find out more about Techrity on our website, www.techrity.org. Uh, you can send us a message, hello at techrity.org. And you can also follow us on our social media channels at techrity.org. So in a short while, we'll be handing over to Juku to talk about Agile approach um how we can use the agile methodology to build successful software products Gloria Ojuku, 
please the stage has been handed over to you. Thank you. Hi guys, good evening everyone. So um thank you Ruth for the introduction. Um is the slide ready? Yes, it is. So while sure the slide is getting ready, it's a cool evening here and I'm just I'm a balcony receiving the Nigerian fresh air. So in case my face is not that up, so just bear with me. Yeah, okay. We can see the fresh air on your face, by the way. Okay, so this screen is shared now. Yeah, um, so I I believe we all already know um the topic I'm, I'm sharing with us. Agile approach to building successful software products. Okay, so next slide, please. So um, this is my handles, my um, social media contacts. In case after now you want to reach out to me, can either reach out to me via Twitter, LinkedIn, or Medium. Okay, next slide. Okay, so um, when you hear um, the word agile, I'll be very short in my explanation. So the agile methodology is an iterative approach to product development that is performed in a collaborative environment by self-organizing teams. The methodology produces high quality software in a cost-effective and timely manner to meet stakeholders changing needs. Now there are many, um, I think there are many um, methodologies you can use to build and manage software products. For um, in this recent and modern times, the agile methodology has proven to be the best approach. Okay, before now, we used to practice the waterfall methodology and some other ones. I know the most common one before now used to be the waterfall methodology. So when you hear the word agile, the first thing that should come to your mind is iteration. Okay, attrition, openness to changes, adaptation, and retesting. So that is all to that is also um, agile. So it's iterative approach to product development. Iteration means you don't go once; you have to go until you satisfy whoever you're building for. In this case, you're building for um, social. Uh, you're building for the for the informal sector. Okay. So you need to um, build to satisfy the informal sector. So, and before you get um, to these iterations, you need to get what we call feedbacks, okay? So while we get to the next stage, that is when I'll um, explain what I mean by feedbacks. So first of all, before you start building any product, the first thing that you should do after the vision and ideation phase is what we call the requirement garden. So you have to gather the requirements. After your business, you don't just, um, I don't know if I'm too fast, if my face is okay, you can say hi on the chat. So let me know if I'm too fast. Am I too fast? No response. Okay. Am I being heard at all? Because I'm not seeing any response. Hello? Hello, Ruth? Yeah, you can go ahead. You're not too fast. Okay. So um, please, can I get um, the next, the upper, the upper slide? So like I was saying, the, um, the requirement gathering is like one of the most important things in Agile. Okay, you don't just wake up one morning because you have one fantastic idea and because you feel you can code you just start coding. No, it's not done that way. You have to actually gather the requirements from the people you are building for. So that is where user interviews come into play. So if you have an idea, it's very important in the, in the agile approach that you actually um, find out from the people who you are building for. Find out exactly how they want the product to be. Because if you build what is in your head, it might be fantastic, but if nobody is willing to use it, it means you have actually wasted your precious time. 
next slide next slide please so like this is a picture of a typical agile system so like i said after your ideation and your vision after all your good dreams about one fantastic product the next thing that should come into place is the requirements this is where you gather your requirements okay and after then you have your design you have your test you have your deployment and now if you look at this picture you can see that it is in a circular motion meaning that there is no particular end okay there's never a perfect software so you don't even have it an end even after deployment you still have to gather requirements after the first iteration and you launch your product you have to gather and in the second iteration is no longer called the requirement is now is now going to be called feedback okay which is also still requirement but in this um, level it's now the feedback so this is when you actually give your product to the users to test and see if it actually met the requirement as that as in the first instance so if it is not being what if it is not what they want you have to start with designing it and you have to develop and test and deploy it is in a circular motion as you can see there is no end so this is what agile is all about iteration openness changes and adaptations okay the next slide please so there is one called the agile manifesto the agile manifesto is like one very important thing you have to um keep at the back of your mind when you're using the agile um, methodology so this is nothing wrong with this one sorry Hello? Was someone trying to ask a question? Okay. So let me continue. So um, the Agile Manifesto is one of the most important things you have to bear in mind when using the Agile methodology. So these are the, they are just, um, there are many actually, but these are the most important four. I think there are up to 12 or so, but these are the most important ones. Okay. So the first one says individuals, and interactions over processes and tools. Now, okay, someone said I should speak louder. Okay, so I was, as I was saying, this is the Agile Manifesto, and it's like one of the very most important things you have to consider when you're building a product, okay, a software product. So, and these are the, so individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Now, this actually means that while the ones on the right hand side are very important. We have to value the ones on the left hand side more. It doesn't mean that the ones on the right hand side are not okay. It means that they are okay, but on the on the um priority level, we have to prioritize the ones on the left hand side more. Okay. So while processes and tools are okay to use, for example, in an agile system or in an agile team, there are so many things, there are so many tools that can help you um actualize your your things goes like um, communication tools documentation tools those are tools and processes but while those things are important individuals and interactions meaning that you have to take communication and the human interaction and relationships over processes and tools because if you just have only tools tools cannot use themselves these people who are communicating very well are going they are going to use these processes and tools so that is why individual interactions matter a lot. So it doesn't matter whether the documentation pro, if you are in a team, you have to prioritize your team members over those tools you feel that you are a pro at. So that is what that um, first manifesto is all about. So the second one is the working product over a comprehensive documentation, okay? Now, if you see many world-class um, organizations like Google, Facebook, um, Slack, and all those, um, companies, they don't joke with their documentations, okay, both internal and um, user documentations. They don't joke with their documentations. But instead of them to have a working doc, a comprehensive documentation without um, a product that is full of errors and bugs, it's better you have a working product over a comprehensive documentation. So while you're, you're, you're um, doing this hacker thing, you have to bear in mind that while the comprehensive documentation is okay, it's very okay, you have to prioritize your working product over comprehensive documentation because if your documentation is not there, okay, somebody will not even be able to 
is your product. This is an open source project. And after now, you'll be pushing it up to GitHub. So if your readme file is not there, people will not be able to actually even be able to contribute to the product, okay? But then it's better that the readme file is not there than there's no product at all. There's no software at all. If you have a readme file and then there's no product to clone and fork and all those, you mean you see that there is no, you just wasted your time. Okay, so that is why you have to prioritize the ones on the left hand side over this other one. So you also have customer collaboration over contract negotiations. Now, before you start building, in this case, this is not a commercialized product, it's a social impact product. Before you start building this product, you should have to go out and gather requirements from your target audience. Say you're building for market women in Nigeria. You have to go to this market. Even if you don't go to my one market, for those of us that stay in Portacot, for example, you could, um, I don't even see any way you can, you can take interviews without going to the market, except you have someone who is going to do it for you because you have to actually go to the market. Because these women are not on social media, okay? They are not, they hardly listen to radios, okay? So you have to go to the market in this instance. So why you gather these requirements? There is something, there is an agreement that has been taken. Okay, maybe probably they told you that they don't go to, they don't go to the market if it is not up to eight o'clock. And now you you've taken that as a KPI, a key performance indicator, and as a metric into um the um into um, producing your software. They can come tomorrow and tell you that okay, there there are policies, there are changes in the poli in the government policies, and we can now resume even if it is 8 a.m., before they had told you that, okay, they wouldn't have been able to go if it is not 8 a.m. But now they are telling you that they are now at liberty, at liberty to go even if it is 6 a.m. Now, would you now say, because there was a contract, there was an agreement, you wouldn't now take the collab you wouldn't now take the new requirement they are giving you, no. So in case this happens most at times with freelancers, especially when they get a paid job, okay, paid job rather. So when, um, the clients have okay said okay this is um, this is it and okay the price of this feature is say 300k for an example so because he has because he has said um, I want the button to look like this and he comes back tomorrow and say I no longer want it to look like this because you feel there was an agreement you don't want to make changes that is not right you have to prioritize the customer collaboration over the contract negotiation. Although I encourage people, especially freelancers, to leave in as much as you're leaving your your um, requirements open to agile changes, you should also leave your um, your pricing open as well. Okay, so you don't get cheated. So you tell your 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 client, I know this is beyond the scope of the hackathon, but for those of us that are freelancers, I'm just gonna fit this in. So you tell your client, in as much as I'm going to adapt to any change and in requirements you're bringing. Your pricing, the pricing is not, is not also static. So if um, the requirements are changing, the prices are also going to be changing, okay? Because if you don't have this knowledge, um, Nigerian clients are going to deal with you a lot. So um, the next one is um, responding to change over following a plan, okay? Responding to change over following a plan is almost as the same thing like the last point is like almost the same thing. So there was a plan, there was a contract. You don't always have to follow that plan. In as much as you have a new requirement from your um, from your clients or from your users, your users, very important in this aspect because nobody's paying you like in a commercial way for this project. You're building for the social sector, okay, for the informal sector. So you have to take whatever they tell you seriously because they are the ones that are gonna be using this product. And you should build what they would use, not what you feel they would use. So that is very important. So the last statement there is what I've already said. That is, while there is value in the items on the right, we value the items on the left more. So you could go to that um, agilemanifesto.org. That was where I got this picture from. So next slide, please. Hello, next slide. Hello, Ruth. Hello.
हेलो 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 आई कैन हियर यू 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 कहीं या या नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट स्लाइड स्लाइड दिस इज ऑन नाउ Yeah, the next slide. Can you I'm see it? I'm still seeing the old one. I'm still seeing the old one. The Agile Manifesto. Hello. Hello. Okay. Can you see the screen? Yes, I can see. It. So I don't know if I can be heard. If you can hear me, please say yes on the chat. It means the network is breaking. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. All right. Awesome. So um these are the um agile methodologies actually we have um we have so many i call these methodologies but you could also refer to them as um frameworks okay now we have about um eight of them seven of them okay but the most the, i think the the ones that are very common are the first three okay scrum kanban and lean okay i think richard will be talking about lean tomorrow and then this um extreme programming these other ones are not mostly in use the ones that are mostly in use currently are the first three chrome kanban and lean and the ones that are very the most common actually out of all these ones are this is the chrome now chrome is very relatable to this um hackathon because what is chrome please please next slide let's understand what is chrome why did we choose chrome okay chrome Anytime you hear Scrum, the first thing that comes to your mind is sprint. Now, what is sprint? Sprints are like short in the sport, um, in the sport world. Sprints are like um, sh short races, okay, that you run over a very short period of time. So it's still the same thing in Scrum. So it's like a very short phase. You say, okay, let's pick up these product features and put it in the backlog. And we are going to be working on them over. A very short period of time. This short period of time is called sprint. Now, Kanban is used for very long, as in very large products that are very um, trajected at a very long, um, very long distance. Now, you can be building a, a software such as um, a software that will be used by, say, 10 million people, and you want to finish it in two months. It's not even possible. Not even the MVP will be ready. depending on what they want to use it for actually if you want something that is very um scalable on a very large spectrum you shouldn't be building in one month okay but your product you can actually build in one month depending on what your mvp features are so scrum is very why i'm going to be focusing on scrum is because of the social impact hackathon we went to be working on because these are um this is a very short period you're not building forever and scrum will will be fitting to that now i left my medium um account you could go check that out i wrote a, i wrote about kanban okay so after i explain scrum you could maybe after when you have chance you could compare the both and see the differences but kanban like i said before is used when you're building when you want to build a larger product over a longer period of time that is when you use kanban now scrum makes use of sprints sprints are like the heart of scrum like it is at the middle of this this picture it explains everything now if you look at this picture you understand that it's almost the same thing with the one we had at the beginning where we are talking about the agile framework the only difference is it's now focusing more on 
uh, scrum practices. So everything here is related to scrum practices, but they are still all agile methodologies and frameworks. So like the first one, the first step there says project vision. This one says, I mean, the first one says um, requirement. This one says vision. So before you start um, the requirement, like I said, the first thing is always your ideation, your vision, when you sleep and you want to, you, you see this almighty um, $3 billion idea that you have. Okay, so that is the whole thing there. So product vision first, then, the, and as you can see, this picture is also very attractive, just like the other one. So there is no particular end. Or so you have a perfect trust where you keep building. Unlike in the water methodology, in the waterfall methodology we used to use before now, in that methodology, you build everything. You don't even test why you're building. You have to, why you're gathering your requirements, you know that that is time for gathering requirements. Why you're designing, you know that that is the time for design. You can't accept changes. The customer comes tomorrow and says, oh, I no longer like this feature. I want to So Remember that you signed a contract and you cannot change it and there's nothing that can be done. Imagine the, the kind of things you're going to be losing out. And because you're waiting, you're, wait, you're going to be following it step by step, okay? You can't even test until you finish developing. And after testing, you might not be able to come back to test again. Imagine the kind of bugs to be pushing to production. So this one is very much preferably and um, more flexible. So, and it's very iterative. So after your release planning, you talk about your implementation. And during your implementation, there are two things. There, there is one thing that is very important, which is called the daily scrum. Some people call it the daily standups. It's a very important um, scrum practice, okay? So this is where members of a, um, a team come together to discuss what they have built so far. So, and daily. Now, it depends on you if you want to be doing it every day, but in the right sense, you should be doing it every day, especially for a short, project like this that has um, that has a very short time. So you should be doing it every day. I shouldn't exceed five minutes. The whole point of the whole thing is understand what your team members were doing yesterday, what they will be doing today, and what they will be doing tomorrow. Okay. So it, it basically answers three questions. What everybody just comes and answers these basic three questions. What did I do today? What um but what um what um what I've forgotten the word. Um, it's like, what were the challenges I had while building it? And what will I be working on tomorrow? So these are the basic three questions you answer on the daily school. Now, you mustn't put up a Zoom meeting for you to practice your daily school. You can do it in your Slack channel or your communication channel. So, but Slack is very much um, encouraged here, but it's very much flexible as well. So I encourage you to use Slack for your daily scrum because there is no way you use Zoom and you wouldn't take more than five minutes. But if you use Chrome, if you integrate a bot that asks you the question, once everybody comes online, the person answers your questions and the um, team lead. Now I'll encourage you in as much as you have in as much as you have um you you you're all probably developers in your team or you have some designers, I would encourage you to have someone that will work as a product manager. I know the person might not have all the knowledge of a product manager, but I encourage you to have someone who will lead you. It's very important. It's very, very important. Someone who will take note of the list chrome, the backlog, the person will actually um note the features and prioritize these features. Okay, after this feature, this is where I'm going to be building tomorrow. Okay, it's it's not encouraged for everybody to decide on that. Everybody can actually bring input, but everybody shouldn't be taking their time. They call it um, backlog strategy, strategize and prioritize your backlog. So one person should have that um, that assignment as a product manager for the sake of this hackathon. Even though you're not a hackathon, um, you're not a product manager. You could just Google it: how to product manage a hackathon project. So. Everything is on Google. So um, after, so this daily scrum is done every day during the implementation. Okay, when it's live, you no longer have you have to be doing your daily scrum. As you can see, the arrow is only done during the implementation phase. So after the implementation, you go.
go back to the sprint review. This is where you take all the features that were selected for that sprint. You, you discuss why you were able to, um, what we were able to achieve, the, the tickets we were able to achieve, the ones we were not able to achieve, and why we were you not able to achieve it. So the sprint um, retrospective meeting is um, taking, in, taking into view what you discuss on your sprint review and bringing, um, bringing a way forward to solve the issues you encountered in your sprint review. So this is very much iterative as well. So you keep doing this thing, even after deployment, it keeps iterating. This is the heart of agile methodology iteration, open-mindedness, and adaptation. Sorry, next slide. Next slide, please. Hello? Um, I'm not sure if Ruth can hear me, but if you can hear me, can you say you can hear me? Let me know if it's from me. Yeah, I can hear you. I can okay. hear you. Sure. I can okay. hear you. Okay. Um, okay. So Ruth, please, could you... I can hear you. Okay, the next slide, please. Uh, it keeps loading. Can you see the slides? No, Not it yet. keeps loading. Okay. Okay, um, while the slide is um, coming up, I think we should use this time for um, the question. If you have a question, you could just drop it so I answer it well. So we don't waste this time. Okay, there's a question in the chat. Maria, my my slide is still the slide is still coming up. I think someone wants to ask a question. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, um, I think I have a question. Okay. Sorry, My question is this, um, I don't know, software developers, are they only app developers or can guys who build the web apps with React and JavaScript, can they be considered software developers as well? Or is it just um, programs and applications? Sorry, can you come again? Hello, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, I heard you, but I didn't really understand your question. Can you come again? Okay, I was trying to ask if um, 
developers are built with React, they are built web apps. If they can okay. be considered software developers too. Okay, of course. Now, what is a software? The software is basically an application that does something out of um, instructions given to the computer. Okay, so whether you're using React, whether you're using um, React is actually JavaScript on the very basic level. React is JavaScript. Whether you're using JavaScript, whether you're using Java, whether you're using PHP, in as much as you're giving some commands to um, the computer, and the computer the computer is executing this command and it's producing a, a, an application. Basically, you're a software developer. Okay, so it doesn't it doesn't matter which um, programming language you're using in as much as your application can actually show the need and it's been born out of instructions being given to the computer. Of course, it's an application is a software and whoever did that is a software developer. Okay. okay. Yeah, like, I, I don't know if I answered you. Yeah, you have, yeah, you have. Okay. Ruth, is this the next slide? Is this supposed to be the next slide? I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, awesome, thank you. So um, these are other resources you can, um, apart from my Medium articles, you could look at, Atlassian are like one of the best people. They have the best tools and processes used for project and product management, okay? So you could look at their Chrome guide and their Agile guide in general to understand more on Agile um, approach to successful products. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, I've said this before. In case you have more questions after now, you could always, always reach out to me. Next slide. Okay, so what's the take home here? I think I've explained the Agile and for this product, for this hackathon, the Agile methodology we are going to be focusing on, I will advise you to focus on is the Scrum methodology. Okay, that is like it's being used when you're building over a short period of time, which is like, this is a very good example or a use case in this scenario. So in agile development, the number one thing to bear in mind is openness to changes and willingness to iterate and adapt because there is never a perfect software, okay? In as much as, in as, much as there is a contract somewhere, there is a perfect documentation somewhere, there should be always openness to gather more requirements because people who are giving you this requirement are actually the users and they are the ones that will use it. And if you did something they want to use, I think you have wasted your time entirely, okay? So um, this is the, like a take home. Number one thing to bear in mind is openness to changes, willingness to iterate and adapt because there is never a perfect software. So I think this is the last slide. Next slide, please. I think my ego B slide. So ego B guys. So um, if you have any questions, um, you can leave it out if there's time. I don't know. I don't know, Ruth. Is there time for more questions? Yes, we can take more questions. Okay. So, um, guys, thank you for staying till this time. Um, this is time for questions. Um, please indicate um, by your muting your mic or you type your questions in the chat. Also, um, I'll be sharing the links um, Gloria shared on our slides on the Slack channel and also on this chat very soon in a, in a couple of minutes. Um, I, like I said it once again, our handle is uh, on Twitter is at tech underscore Bella. So you can follow her on Twitter. You can follow her Medium um, page, um, Tech Bella, Tech Dash Bella. Uh, you can follow her on LinkedIn, uh, Gloria Ojuku. Um, please, anyone have, has a questions, question, please unmute your mic and speak. This uh, approach is very important for building soft, successful software products. Um, it's needed in your software development team, and um, you need it in the hackathon because it will help you iterate faster and know the, which of the um, features are very needed for you to build and 
the um, features that will make you win um, the hackathon. So in your project, in your team, um, endeavor to have one. Um, if the team lead can do this, fine. It's um, very much. It's very much okay. So following these processes helps you to um, iterate faster and know which um, features are needed, um, and not to just build blindly. You build with feedback. Uh, you build what people need, and uh, you build um, a successful um, hackathon project and a successful MVP. Um, thank you, um, guys. Thank you. Thank okay, you. I, thank I you. I see a question here. Okay. Can you elaborate on the legal usage of Chrome based on what is on the slide? Okay, I assume you're talking about the daily Chrome. I don't know if I'm correct. Um, if that is what you mean. If yeah. that is what you mean, can leave a yes on the chat. So, but I, I no, God, please, that, please, okay. Okay, okay. Please leave, um, okay. So, so um, cool. the daily scrum, like I said, is basically answers two questions. It answers the question of what did you work on yesterday? Okay, what are you going to be working on today? And what, um, what problem did you encounter while working on yesterday's task? So, these are the um, most, these are the basic. In fact, these are the two questions he answered. So if you're using your Slack to handle this, you could um, integrate the, um, it's called, a, there's a bot called the Chrome bot. You could integrate your, I think, daily standard bot. I think just go to the marketplace of Atlassian. You could see some of, most of these tools are free, at least for a um, limited number of people. Okay, so since the team members are not even up to five, you could um, integrate the bot. So it basically answers these two questions, and it's very efficient in larger things. Even if this is this hackathon is just for three people, it's very efficient to actually put instead of calling for meetings every time because you might not have time to always be calling for meetings. So you could always use this daily scrum to get like a general feedback of what you've been doing, okay, of what your team members have been doing yesterday, today. And tomorrow. So you basically answer the question: What did you do yesterday? What problem did you encounter building yesterday? And what will you be building um, today? So these are the basic questions it answers. And I hope I've answered your I've answered your question, Godwin. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Cool. So, um, does anyone else have a question? Please unmute okay. your mic and speak. I hope this um, webinar um, um, on agile approach to building successful software products has been very helpful for um, the hackathon participants. Please um, make use of this um, approach, the Scrum methodology. And um, tomorrow we'll be um, looking at the Lean method. Um, as as uh, speaker Gloria Ojuku, she mentioned the Scrum, she mentioned the Lean method, um, and um, that the Scrum method is um, easier to go through um, um, in iterating faster. Tomorrow we'll be looking at the Lean method. Um, so endeavor to attend uh, the webinar tomorrow by 5 p.m. Um, West African time. Thank you, Gloria Ojuku, for um, um, accepting to uh, speak um, at um, the Build for Informal Sector Hackathon 2020 webinar. Um, we appreciate um, your um, willingness to your willingness to speak and talk to advise Hackathon participants. And we hope that in future, um, in the future, when you be called on, you um, answer Tecrity. Thank you very okay. much. Okay. Yeah, yes, thank thank you. you. So um, I wish all the hackathon participants um, good luck and success in your project. Yep. Good so luck. Bye. Good luck. Um, I'm all still the links. I'm, I'm all the links. My stuff. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. All the links mentioned um, um, will be shared on the Slack channel, and also will be shared right now.
So thank you very much, guys, for um, attending. Please um, also share this um, webinar event on your social media handles um, using the hashtags on the chat, tagging, uh, uh, tagging our speaker at tech underscore Bella and also tagging tech at Techrity Org. We appreciate you for your time. And tomorrow, we'll see you tomorrow by 5 p.m. West African time for the Lean um, product too. Thank you, guys. Um, bye. We have come to the end of the webinar. Bye, everyone. See you tomorrow.